Okay, so I'm going to spend my four minutes working on two reflections on the topic of hand and focusing a little bit on the sort of what this stuff implies for the future of communication research. So um, as the, I am not as the program suggests Aaron Shaw, but I am structurally equivalent. Um, uh, uh, I am, uh, uh, it's like if you know me, it's like not a joke because it's also true. Um, uh, I, I am here in his place as sort of a representative of the Community Data Science Collective, which is a, sort of a research network which I created with Aaron. Now, the collective, this is a uh, subset. Actually, Aaron's not there. Um, uh, um, he had a baby recently, so he couldn't be in our most recently picture or here. Uh, the collective is a multi-institution network with students and faculty uh, at the University of Washington, where I am, also at Northwestern, at the University of North Carolina, at Carleton, and in a couple months, I don't know if Jeremy's here, in Purdue as well. Um, the, our research really focuses on the production of communal public goods and on the social and communicative dynamics that support the production, organization, and uh, maintenance of knowledge bases in online communities. Now, uh, this is a sampling of some of the communities that we've studied. They're all online communities involved in the collaborative production of knowledge bases um, and is the site for lots of connections between people. And today, these types of communities are producing some of the world's most popular and important information goods, things like Wikipedia and Linux. Now, um, many of you will realize that the term I've used to describe our work is a sort of a concept which I'm drawing from the work of Janet and Peter. And it's difficult to overstate the importance of their work to our, our research network and to the stuff that we work on. None of the founding members of our research network have PhDs in communication. And although none of us have actually worked with Janet or Peter directly, um, I think it's not an exaggeration to say that our work is on our groups are housed in communication departments. We publish in communication journals. Um, and we're producing now a new generation of communication scholars because of the work that Janet and Peter did. Not just the study, but um, their body of work. We came to communication from sociology and from organization science and management and from computing because the best theoretical tools to understand the kinds of knowledge bases which I sort of just had up on the last slide in which we study um, existed, they were communication theories. And the reason they were communication theories is in large part because Janet and Peter had um, developed them and done most of the, much of the most important work in this space. Now, uh, that's the sort of the, that's observation one, that the future of communication research, at least from the myopic view of my own research group, uh, is, uh, involves um, increasingly studying these new forms of production um, and connection that are increasingly at the center, center of our lives and experience. And that's a path which has been blazed for us by Janet and Peter. All right. Um, uh, this is a picture of uh, a whiteboard in my lab at the University of Washington. I had one of my students take a picture of this a few days ago in preparation for this talk. And it's existed like this for the last, I don't know, 12 or 14 months. Um, uh, uh, Kaylee Champion, who's a PhD student at UW who took the picture, explained um, to one of the other students who had somehow been sitting in the room for the last year and didn't know what these strange letters meant, um, that they were three successive heuristics for graduate school. Um, the first one is do your research, um, uh, which is, uh, um, these, the students wrote these for each other um, as advice. Uh, um, uh, basically, we're judged by our research output, and this is obviously a criteria which uh, Janet and Peter will do very well on. Um, the second one is also true on the internet, which is a cautionary acronym. It's a thing not to do. Uh, um, understanding that things that are true in the rest of the world are also true on the internet um, can be an important part of communication research. Um, but I think that we, our group believes, and the students try to remind each other, that they should always go further than that, um, especially now that we have several decades of research doing this behind us. Um, and Janet and Peter, uh, um, I think that one of the most important feature of Janet and Peter's work has been that they have never been a toady. Um, uh, and not only because Quite a lot of their scholarship was done before uh, the internet was widespread. Um, Janet and Peter have used technology and mediated communication uh, as opportunities to build new theories about organizations and organizing in general. And uh, we aspire to follow their lead. Um, the third acronym, uh, um, Appendigia, uh, stands for, as always, uh, I, this was not set up. It really has been on the board for the last year. Um, uh, stands for, as always, Peter Manji did it 20 years ago. Um, uh, for example, there was that time that we were really struggling, the group was trying to frame hypotheses about sort of dynamic processes within an organization. You wrote a paper about it in 1990, that's more than 20 years ago. Um, uh, uh, the third or fourth time this happened, someone wrote it on the board. Um, uh, um, and as Kaylee explained to the graduate student who asked about this, she says, when you're stuck, don't worry, Peter and Janet have solved your problem when you were in kindergarten. Um, uh, so, uh, 
That's the second observation, um, which is really actually a prediction. When we, when we arrive at the future of communication research, somehow, weirdly, Janet and Peter are already there. With <laughs> so.